Ever wondered why understanding the life cycle of a data science project is crucial for success? Let's dive in. The life cycle of a data science project is a sequence of steps that guide the project from start to finish. It begins with problem definition. This is where we identify the problem we want to solve and define our goals. Next, we move to data collection, gathering the information we need to address the problem. Data pre-processing follows, where we clean and format the data to make it ready for analysis. After pre-processing, we conduct exploratory data analysis, or EDA, to understand the patterns in the data. Feature engineering comes next, where we create new features from the existing data. Then we select a model that will best solve our problem. We train this model on our data, evaluate its performance, and if it meets our criteria, we deploy it. Each stage of the data science project lifecycle plays a vital role in the outcome of the project. Data science is not just about understanding data, but also about having the right tools to analyze and interpret it. And the toolbox of every data scientist is filled with a collection of powerful libraries. First up, we have Pandas. This library is a lifesaver when it comes to data manipulation and analysis. It's like a Swiss army knife for handling data in Python. Next, there's NumPy, the go-to library for numerical operations and array manipulation. It's the backbone for many other Python libraries and is known for its computational efficiency. Then we have Matplotlib and Seaborn, the dynamic duo for data visualization. Matplotlib is the granddaddy of Python plotting libraries, while Seaborn is like its more stylish offspring, providing enhanced visualization capabilities. And last but not least, we have Scikit-Learn, or Sklearn for short. This library is a one-stop shop for machine learning tools, offering various algorithms for classification, regression, clustering, and more. Choosing the right library is like choosing the right weapon for a battle. Choosing the right model for your data can be like navigating a maze. There are so many options but only one correct path. To find this path, start by analyzing the problem and data. Understand what you're trying to solve and the nature of your data. Are you predicting categories or continuous values? Is your data text, images, or numbers? Next, consider model complexity, interpretability, and performance. A more complex model might give better results, but it might also be harder to understand and slower to run. Don't forget to experiment with multiple algorithms. There's no one-size-fits-all in machine learning or deep learning. Each algorithm has its strengths and weaknesses, and the best one depends on your specific task. Finally, use cross-validation to assess performance. This technique gives a more reliable estimate of how your model will perform on unseen data. Remember, the goal is not just to build a model, but to build a model that works well in the real world. The right model can turn your data into a gold mine of insights. Let's delve into the fundamentals of machine learning, the backbone of many data science projects. Machine learning can be broadly classified into three types, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. Supervised learning is like having a guide, where the algorithm learns from labeled data. Unsupervised learning, on the other hand, is like exploring a new city without a map. The algorithm finds patterns and structures in unlabeled data. Reinforcement learning is a bit like learning to ride a bike. The algorithm learns by trial and error, getting rewards or penalties for actions. Now, let's talk about overfitting and underfitting. Overfitting is like memorizing the answers to a test. It works great on the test, but not so well when faced with new questions. Underfitting is like using only basic arithmetic to solve calculus problems. It simply doesn't capture the complexity of the data. Finally, the bias-variance trade-off. It's a balancing act between being too simple, high bias, and being too complicated, high variance. Both can lead to poor predictions. Understanding these fundamentals is key to mastering machine learning. Now let's get to the heart of machine learning regression and classification. These two concepts are the backbone of many machine learning models, and they each serve a unique purpose. Regression, for instance, is all about predicting continuous values. Think about predicting a house's price based on its size, location, and age. These are continuous variables, and regression models help us make sense of how these factors contribute to the final price. On the other hand, classification is about predicting categories or labels. Imagine you're building a model to identify whether a picture is of a cat or a dog. This is a classic example of a classification problem. You're not predicting a continuous value, but assigning each input into one of two categories. So, in a nutshell, regression and classification are two fundamental techniques in machine learning, 
each with its own unique use cases. Whether you're predicting house prices or identifying cat pictures, regression and classification got you covered.